I'd like when it's your turn or you want to speak, you know, if you can turn on your video so we can see you. And later on, when this goes along, if we're going to ask for names and addresses, just like if you were in public at town hall when we would be doing this, that way we have everything on record. All right. All right, Chrissy. You can you can start recording. Okay. Let me know when you're good. We're good. Okay. All right. The audience participants and general public should be aware that any or all portions of this open meeting may be recorded by audio and video resources. All of some of this meeting may be rebroadcast periodically by WRPS or other outlets. Persons wanting a DVD copy of this meeting should contact WRPS or the Board of Selectmen's office. A small fee will be charged. All right. Uh, first thing we have up on the list is uh, a Form A for um, 91 Dexter Road, Map 52, Lot 63. 366 and 67 with uh, Carl Garvey. Is he here? Is he Excuse me, Mike. Don't forget to list all the members of the planning board that are here. Oh, uh, yes. All right. All right. We, I have, we have myself, Michael Corbett, chairman. We have John Lucas, vice chairman. Uh, we have Randy. I'm going to put you your last name. <laughs> He's like, hope it tells. <laughs> He's like, James is laughing. He's under, he, he, Hobitzel. He's under Hobie. And we have the new uh, member, uh, James Wells, who was just appointed the other day from the Board of Selectmen. That's why I have Hobie, Mike. Huh? That's, yeah, that's why you're Hobie. That's right. <laughs> All right. If it has to be official, it's Hoblitzel. So people know we're good. Okay. I was close. <laughs> All right. Is uh, Carl Garvey here? I think Carl is on. I think he's B Vega. And where is he on my list here? All right. Can you unmute him? I I did ask. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I see you. I don't know if you can see me. We can't see you. No, we can't see you, Carl. Yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> Um, All right, since you're here, you know, you came before us. Uh, geez, I don't even remember now, last year for the road extension. And now we have the form A. So if you would just like to. Uh, looks back. like I'm back on now. Um, yeah. Go. Yeah, we did a roadway improvement plan uh, dated uh, May 19th, 2019, which was. Uh, off of Dexter Road, and it was three lots, lots one, two, and three. Um, it had always been basically three lots uh, uh, under um, Jonathan Kiedman's name. Um, and on the roadway improvement plan, well, one of the assessor's maps, actually lot number two that's shown on my plan, uh, was actually undersized by four or 5,000 square feet. Um, what we did was we took a piece of lot number three and added it to number two. So it would be over the uh, required uh, square footage. Um, so none of the frontages changed or anything like that. Um, and it is the same that's on there, but we, did, we I guess we should have had two boxes on that plan. Maybe one as a roadway improvement plan and one is a form a, uh, but uh, for some reason, we didn't do that. I don't know if Pat can remember that or not, but um, it, it, so it, it is on a, the plan that you have tonight is on a plan 
that has a roadway that was previously endorsed by the planning board. Um, and they have several notes that lots two and lots two and three uh, are subject to a covenant and they recorded in the Plymouth Registry of Deeds book 52320, page 217, which is number, number five on the Form A plan tonight. And note number four says the purpose of this plan is to provide a and our approval for lot shown on plan entitled Roadway Improvement Plan or Plan of Lots in Rockland, Mass. Owned by Jonathan B. Keeveman, dated February 19, 2019. Recorded in Plan Book 64, page 77. Um, so based on that, the property really can't well, lots two and three can't be conveyed until uh, the roadway is constructed and that's recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, we'll start off with uh, Randy. Oh, he's muted. I know he wasn't though. There we go. How's that? Yep. Um, I'm to be honest with you. I'm trying to recall it. It's nothing we could put up on the screen quick. If anybody has, is there? Um, I'm trying to find it here, which is my fault. No. All right. Sorry. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know if any. Uh, I'm both, well. This is the recorded plan out of the registry in which we showed a road profile, road section, uh, sewer manholes, the hydrants, and uh, the proposed roadway width that was to be constructed. Um, and the board signed this plan as a roadway improvement plan. Um, so, at that time. On that plan, it says a covenant is to be recorded here with stating that lots two and three cannot be uh, built upon until the roadway is completed, which is still true today. Um, that lots two and three can't be built on or sold separately until the roadway is built. Or, or, or a bond would be put up for the bond for the construction of the road. I don't know if. Okay. Wants to <laughs> no. It's slowly seeping back into my, you know, to the remembrance that was a while ago. Yeah, basically they were three lots that were always on the assessor's map. We didn't really create uh, the pork chop lot. It was created by an older plan. Um, I think it was plan book, oh, what was it? Plan book, plan book A, page 510. I think it was an old CW Howland plan. Um, which showed numer what showed uh, lots. Um, um, I believe it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Basically, nine lots in a remaining area. Uh, um, and lot one is comprised of uh, four of those lots, and the other ones were comp comprised of the remaining. Lot two originally was three lots, and then we just increased it to make it a portion of a lot. But we did show that on the roadway improvement plan, as I think the assessor's map only showed that as being around 28,000 square feet, that particular lot. Um, so small, I can't read it. Yeah, around 28,000 square feet, that a lot was. Lot two was originally 28,000 square feet. I've increased it. To thirty-two thousand seven seventy-five, basically. That what was that? I sh also showed that on the roadway improvement plan, um, but I believe somebody from your board or the building department said that they thought a form A plan should be put on record. Also. Okay, thank you. Um, James, do you have any questions? I do not. Okay. Uh, John? I do not. Okay. Uh, I just got a couple quick questions. We're going by the 
your form a lot here mm -hmm. how you're dividing it up as opposed to how it's listed in the town assessments book correct yeah we're, we're actually just well we're mainly changing lot two uh by taking the remaining right. air, other area from lot number three uh the house lot has stayed the same okay it's always been the same size okay but i just want to make it make it make it clear that this form a plan uh, it's it's being endorsed as approval not required because it was shown on a plan previously endorsed by the planning board on an approval plan but it is still subject to a covenant uh it's not like they can go ahead and sell a lot two tomorrow to Calgary and uh without the roadway being built or bond being uh done so uh that's that's why the covenant's recorded at the registry of deeds okay thank you Kyle. Mm -hmm. all right what does uh the board think i'll make a motion to approve it okay we have a motion to approve do i have a second I, I see Randy waving. He's seconding <laughs> it because he muted himself and can't get back on. I'll second that. <laughs> Here he goes. All right. We have a first and a second, so we'll go through the motions again. Uh, John? Yes. Randy? Yes. James? Yes. Uh, Michael, I vote yes. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Okay, thank you very much. You guys have a good evening. Thank you. Right, you too. Yep. Take care, Go. Yep, fine. Christy, is this the, should we just leave us mute, unmuted? Yes. Okay, I, I can see how this is happening. Since I came on at the last minute, I'm going, I can't talk here, but now we're good. Okay. Just be quiet, Randy. I know, I did the same thing to because I was folding stuff and I was making a ton of noise. I'm like, let me mute <laughs> myself because it's annoying. <laughs> we're all good. I was like, oh, don't do that again. Usually the last meeting I was telling people to mute themselves. <laughs> they were making noise. Now, now I'm that person. Yeah. Normally I mute because there's people in the house coming in going, are you still on the meeting? <laughs> but I have a clear home right now. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, another form A up, up for review here. Um, Seven eighty nine seven seventy three Liberty Street map twenty nine lots eighty nine and one forty three. Um, Roderick McClellan. Yep. Oh, and Chrissy's going to have to unmute you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, Pat. I um. I don't know where he is. He has his. I don't oh, know. oh, I he see. Has his video on. I see. He's waving. <laughs> All right. There we go. Hello. Hello. All right. We received your form A, and you're looking to basically just do a little. A swap of land that's correct uh you want me, me to describe it yeah if you could just explain what you were all right get, get um, achieving. i'm going i want to add to my lot a triangle that's 101 square feet and it's in the the northwest corner of lot 89. <clears throat> and then my neighbor, Chris Saucier, uh, will take uh, 101 square feet from my lot adjacent to Liberty Street. And it's sort of a rectangle that comes to a point. So it's an even swap, 101 square feet. Uh, the, the reason I want to do it is um, if cars turn around in front of my house, uh, we're, we're on his corner. 
and he can use my corner near the street. Sounds simple enough. All right, we'll uh, go through the board to see. Uh, Randy, any questions? No. James? No. John? No. All right, seeing, seeing no questions. Uh, can we get a motion? A motion. Second? Second. And we have a first and a second. We'll go through it again, make it official. Randy? Yes. John? Yes. James? Yes. I'm Michael? That's a yes. All right, that concludes four minutes. Um, everyone, Thank you very much. All right, the Mylars are a town hall, I assume, so we'll have to start getting over there sometime this week to sign all the paperwork and get it back to you. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. All right. You have to open the public hearing. Yes. We'll see. All right. All right, what do we have here? All right, we're going to open the public hearing for uh, PUD for Concord Meadows, Conrock LLC, uh, Walter Sullivan. Um, I'm going to get the ad. <clears throat> I'm going to bring this up on my phone. Uh, town of Rockland. Massachusetts Planning Board Notice of Public Hearing, March 23rd, 2021. Hereby, notice is hereby given under the accordance to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 81, Chapter 40A, Section 11 in the Rockland Code, Town Code, Zoning by Laws, Article 8, Section 415 56. The Rockland Planning Board will hold a public hearing on March 23rd, 2021 at 7 p.m. via remote teleconference and via Zoom for the purpose of considering a proposal of 19 planned, 19 unit planned unit development, design and site review plan entitled Rockland Meadows filed by Conrock LLC here of Walter Sullivan. It's got Sullivan and Comerford PC located at a property known as and numbered 365 Conkin Street Rockland Mass 02370, which said property is located in the I-1 residential zoning district and identified on the map 62 parcels, 35, 36, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 46 of the town of Rockland assesses map. The public is invited to attend remotely and a complete copy of the plan unit development is on file with the town clerk in the planning department may be inspected electronically by the request Chrissy McPherson at the planning board at rockland-mass.gov. All right. Um, who wants to start? Do you want to start, Walter? Yes, please, Mr. Chair. For the record, Walter Sullivan, an attorney representing the applicant um, with me is my associate, Kayla McLeod. Also, the applicant, Matt Dacey from Conrock LLC, and our project engineer, John Cavanaugh from Cavanaugh and Associates. Um, as you indicated in looking at the notice, um, this is a uh, area of land that contains approximately 21.3 acres. Um, it's going to be 19 new units. The 20th will be the existing home that's there. Um, what I would propose to do is have Mr. Dacey talk a little bit about what he proposes to construct, and then Mr. Cavanaugh will address the plan, and we can take any questions from the board, if that is to the pleasure of the chair. Yes. Thank you. All right, Matt, would you like to say a few words about our project? 
Good evening. Uh, thanks for hearing us. Uh, basically, we're, we're trying to get approved a 20 lot uh, PUD, single family detached homes. Uh, we think it would be a nice fit for the parcel. Uh, we revised our, we, we, we practiced several revisions over the last probably 14, 18 months. <clears throat> I think that uh, this would this is probably most beneficial for the parcel and maybe for the neighborhood, hopefully. Um, maybe 20 years ago, my company, Champion Builders, built the homes off of uh, Winter Circle, right around the corner, about three quarters of a mile down the street. Uh, through our steps that we tried to uh, do previously, we did get permission from the water department and the sewer department for the connections for the Larger, larger proposed development with the ZBA. Um, so we think that the plan that we have revised and spent a lot of time coming up with uh, how the lots shape up and uh, we, think it'll, we think it'll be a real benefit to the area. We don't, we don't think it will be a detriment at all. Uh, we, you know, I guess a little bit about my company, um, myself, my two sons, uh, they're on the call tonight, Tom and Paul. Um, I've been in, been in business for 36 years. Champion Builder started in 1992, and we have a tremendous uh, amount of experience building single family homes <clears throat> uh, throughout the area. So uh, I know that we'll do a good job, and I know that the parcel is a solid parcel uh, that we could uh, provide some uh, excellent housing for uh, Rockland residents. Um, in the other development that we did do in Rockland, uh, we, we probably had north of uh, 60 to 70 percent of the residents that purchased from us there were previously Rockland residents. So uh, I think that's that's a stronghold for the community, um, and I think that uh, I think it, I think it'd be a great job. I think that the layout actually I think John did an excellent job coming up with the layout uh, to to make the footprints work, and uh, I know that uh, we went through a lot of a lot of effort to do so. So uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, for the record, my name is John Cavanaro. I'm a civil engineer from Cavanaro Consulting at 687 Main Street in Norwell, Massachusetts. And if it's okay with the board, I will share my screen and take us through the plans. Um, before I do that, just a, just a real quick backdrop um, to sort of circle back from what was originally submitted as part of this project. Um, so this is, it's always been conceived as a planned unit development to take advantage of a large tract of land and try to minimize the amount of infrastructure and work within the PUD regulations in Rockland. Uh, going through the regulations originally, it was a little unclear whether or not we could utilize the density in the planned unit development regulations um, strictly from the regs, which call for a specific density of number of units per acre, uh, or if we were to uh, go with the straight conventional yield application. So uh, originally what we did was we came up with sort of a hybrid of the two. We, we looked at the regulations for density and saw that you could utilize as many as four units per acre uh, on a 20-acre parcel that would maximize out at, at about 80 units, we came up with um, half of that at the original outset to 40 units, uh, even though the conventional yield was coming up at about 20 units. So what we did was we submitted that original application. It was suggested that we seek relief from the ZBA to get clarification on the uh, discrepancy, I guess, between uh, what the PUD regs call for in terms of density per unit and of, of acre versus what the conventional yield came out with. So we submitted that. Um, we went back to the table in the meantime. Uh, as Matt said, we, we took a, a harder look at the overall development. That original development was 40 units spanning across the entire 21 acres. And uh, now what we're doing is we're, we're looking at developing essentially half of the 20 acres uh, and keeping st sticking to a more conventional planned unit development, so try to densify the, 
the development and maximize open space. So I just wanted to uh, provide that backdrop a little bit um, for some color, but I will open up my screen uh, if everybody can see that okay. We'll walk through the plans. This, this property, is, as many of you are probably familiar with, is located between French's Stream and Concord Street. Uh, it's located east of French's Stream. It's uh, generally a rectilinear parcel of land that goes back from Concord Street, uh, runs sort of, a, it has its uh, swath of frontage that comes along the location of the existing driveway to the existing single family home, uh, which is developed in about a four acre footprint uh, generally with the single family home, pool and accessory structure. And the lot runs back to French's Stream. The first thing we did, and looking at this parcel um, a little over a year ago, is we had all of the wetland, uh, bordering vegetated wetland, the intermittent stream, and the riverfront itself delineated by a professional wetland scientist. We filed an, what's called an ANRAD, an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation with the Rockland Conservation Commission to certify the location of the wetland so that we had a hard line from which to base our proposed development on. So as you can see, uh, coming back from Concord Street, the, the principal uh, 20 acres is bisected by an intermittent stream that runs behind the single family dwelling. And then there's a large, uh, it, it's sort of broken up almost in half, about 10 acres in the front piece, 10 acres in the back piece. Then there's a, a large swath, swath of upland that runs all the way back to French's stream. So French's stream runs in, a, in sort of the meandering edge along the, uh, the western side of the land, and then that has its riverfront that comes back from that. So looking at this from a conventional standpoint, which is the first step to determine density, uh, what is the conventional yield of the property using um, all of the, the, the principal guidelines in the subdivision control law for Rockland for this type of road. Uh, we laid that out throughout the entire 21 acres, uh, which brought us uh, into the property. We ran a loop road into the back half of the, the second half of the 10 acres, brought that back around, and reconnected with the front half of the property. And what that did was that yielded 20 lots uh, in total, including the existing single-family home. So. Uh, ignoring that that existed, we laid all that out with a conventional subdivision, and that yielded 20 lots. So looking at that and, and versus looking at the, the density calculations at all, we just stuck with the 20 units total, uh, backed out of that about 2.5 acres for the existing single-family home. So we're keeping that existing single-family home as is, uh, with the exception of redirecting some of the driveways. Uh, of that, about four acres of development, really keeping that down into the two and a half acre lot that will be left with uh, the single family home. And then what we did was we ran uh, a single cul de sac road, uh, bent it back towards Concord Street, and laid out the 19 remaining lots around the, ro the proposed roadway. And what it results in is about eight to 9,000 square foot lots. Um, they're they're located, um, you know, fairly within close proximity to one another. To again take it sort of in the spirit of that planned unit development, keep things uh, more densified, reduce the infrastructure, which ultimately reduces the overall impact on the land, uh, minimizes runoff, and but more importantly, maximizes open space. So what that does, it leaves the second 10 acres completely open. Uh, for open space, uh, so this this could be it, it's a, it's a nice buffer to the French stream. So we leave that all untouched. The majority of the wetland on the on the westerly side of that intermittent stream, and it keeps all of the development within that that first 10 acres or so, with um, the ability to to connect with walking paths or nature trails that can cross over and get up, get into that upland area. So with this development, uh, and this is a preliminary plan, so we're here this evening to sort of introduce, reintroduce the project 
to the board and to confirm that indeed uh, this meets the spirit of the planned unit development guidelines and we don't believe that this triggers any relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals, but we wanted to clarify that with you because we did articulate for discussion purposes some of the, the waivers um, that we still would like to sort of walk through, and I'll just quickly go through those. Um, from, the, from the bylaw standpoint, so there's two things uh, in terms of your regulations that we'd like to get clarity on. One is the, the actual zoning bylaw, and second is the or the Rockland Planning Board rules and regulations as it pertains to the planned unit development. So uh, under section 415-47A, it gives discretion to the Special Permit Granting Authority, which is the Planning Board under the Planned Unit Development. So section 415, uh, it's Article 7, is, is for the planned unit developments in the Rockland zo uh, Zoning Bylaw. It essentially gives leeway and authority to the Special Permit Granting Authority to make uh, changes to uh, strict adherence to plot sizes, um, dimensional relief, um, location and height of buildings. Uh, and that's obviously to enable that planned unit development to take advantage of a more dense layout and create creating that open space, minimizing infrastructure. So we don't think that really requires any relief. Just want to clarify that that in itself the planning board is the special permit granting authority and that they can clearly um, grant that. The second is that, and, and this is something that we were unsure of at first as well, but we think what, what this reads is the planning board has uh, a requirement for minimum total lot area for a PUD and the zoning bylaw has a different minimum area. The bylaw calls for 10 acres uh, of land but it also excludes, it says that no more than about a quarter acre of that land, which we assume that land meaning the minimum 10 acres, may be subject to the Rivers Protection Act. So in our case, we have, uh, of the 21 acres, uh, there's about four acres of riverfront area. So that's riverfront as defined by uh, Mass General Law is the, from the edge of the river 200 feet landward. So on this 21 acres, we have about four acres of riverfront. So backing that out, we're still well in advance of the, of the 10 acres that are required under the zoning bylaw. So we think we meet that, but we just want clarity on that. And then the last thing uh, from the zoning bylaw standpoint is the in internal street setback. Um, it, it's clear to us in section 415-48B uh, that the internal street setback of 25 feet is for non-residential uses uh, in Section B. So we just wanted to get that clarified. So again, we don't think we would need any relief from those as they speak for themselves, but we want more clarity on that. As far as design regulations, which if, if the planning board, uh, which we agree is the special permit granting authority under the PUD, that you have the authority um, through uh, your discretion and, of course, um, having us proven that we meet all design guidelines, uh, best professional practice, that we would be able to seek some, some pretty standard waivers uh, as needed, uh, such as buffer zones, distance between the buildings, um, the alignment of the street with the, with the main street. Uh, we, we're not exactly at 90 degrees. Um, because of how the, the alignment of the main road works. And if we want to get fire hydrants, of course, it would be in accordance with the fire department and the water department if we space them a little bit closer than 350 feet. Um, and then just any other relief that we, we, we would assume would be granted um, in order to really make adva take advantage of the planned unit development guidelines. So with that, um, I hope I wasn't too long-winded. I just wanted to get that through, and we're happy to, to answer any questions uh, on the project. If Walter, if you want to add any more to that, if I missed anything.
Uh, Pat, do you have any comments? Um, yeah, um, just for the public's information, I'm Pat Brennan with the Emory Engineers, the board's consultant engineer. Um, I've been looking at this project um, for about the past year. Uh, John uh, sent over a couple of the preliminary draft plans and layouts to me to take a look at. So I'm familiar with the layout that he's, that he's come up with, um, or at least the, the, the yield plan, the density plan. Um, and I looked at that and for the 20 lots on the conventional subdivision, they do have all the required frontage lot area and upland area for all of those 20 lots. So it is a conforming conventional subdivision plan. Um, and as John said, I agree with him with his interpretation of the bylaw with some of the discretion that the board has as to lot sizes and things like that. And um, basically what this plan shows, I am um, looking at the lot areas, it's almost 63% of the 21 <clears throat> acres will be open space when they're done here. So they're really kind of making the development a lot more compact, like John mentioned, and uh, trying to preserve um, as much of the open space as they can. Um, obviously there's the big upland area out in the back part. Um, so it, you know, I, I think, I mean, obviously it's a preliminary plan, so there's still a lot of engineering and stuff that needs to go into it um, and to review, but um, I think they're on the right track with this, at least from my interpretation of the of the bylaw and the planning board rules and regs for the PUD. All right, thank you, Pat. Uh, all right. Um, Randy, do you have any comments? Uh, can you come back to me at the end? I'm just looking at a few things. Yep. All right, we'll, we'll jump right over to John. Um, at tonight, I'm under the impression that you're not looking for an approval of any kind for this. This is just more or less informal. And I would assume when you do come for final, we will get reports from the uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, you'll satisfy the requirement. The fire department's not satisfied with it right now. Um, and that you'll provide confirmation from water and sewer that they're okay with it. We will supplement with that. This is a preliminary plan, Ms. Lucas. That's right. Okay. Um, we did receive a letter from one of the residents regarding, I think it was back at some point in time, the driveway that's now being used was supposedly never to be used as a roadway. Has that been investigated or looked into or anything of that nature? I'll, I'll just indicate that um, that letter, I don't think we saw until just this evening. We are looking into that and we'll report at the next meeting. Okay. I think that's all the questions I have right now, Mike. Uh, James, do you have any questions? Do not. I have a question for uh, Tony Riley, just out of curiosity. If they go forward with this subdivision, okay. uh, does everything, all the lots have to be floor made? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, I was muted, sorry. Um, I didn't hear the last like part of your question. All the lots have to be what? Do they, would the lots have to be four made? Uh, I don't believe so. I think this is the, the, the what you're approving now uh, would qualify. Okay. Uh, not regarding that, but um, I'm wondering how long I would have to wait for all the Yeah, it, it would be, if it was approved, you know, when they come back with the with the formal plans, it would be approved, approved as a plan unit development, but. Yeah. Um, basically as a subdivision. The plan unit development regulations require that they build the roadways and everything to subdivision standards. Right. I guess that's what um, and the um, 
the lots would be broken up the way that they would present them on that final plan, which I assume would be pretty similar to this preliminary plan. Okay. Um, anything? What else we have here? Like I'm good. The questions I have were kind of pretty much answered there up for now. Okay. Yeah, because we did get, you guys got a copy of the letter from, that was received today. Uh, if you're speaking to the applicant, we got it, yeah, just shortly before sure. the year. Thank you. First, we've heard of that, but we will confirm that with the title. Okay. Okay, because I was pretty much... Uh, are you guys going back before uh, going before the ZBA? No, I, I don't believe that we need to. At least that's our interpretation. Um, you know, I think John alluded to. You know, I, I think I, our interpretation is with this more modest plan that this is just solely for the planning board under the PUD. Okay. Um, so you know, you're, you're just looking to go forward with this, right? Come back to us again when you have more finalized plans. That's correct. And any input the board wants to give us, but we've heard what you've had to say so far. How wide is the roadway? 24. The road leading in is 24 feet? Yes. Uh, John, John can confirm, but I believe it's 24 with 12 inch Cape Cod berms. That's correct. Is this going to become a public street? We don't really have any intention at this point, what we would do. Um, I'm not sure where the town is on taking roads, um, Mr. Lucas, but at this point, you know, that we're, we're showing it um, as a road that will be controlled. And then at some point, if the association looks to have it taken by the town and the town's taken, then, then that would be something. But at this point, that's not our intention. Okay. I think there is something in the regulations about it being a private road. So I'll, I'll double check on that. But it, it's either in the zoning by, I saw something about it being a private road. Okay. And if that's a condition, then that's fine. I don't remember that in the bylaw, but I'm sure Mr. Brennan's right. Because I know the well, I can't say for a fact, but I'm pretty sure the fire department will have a, uh, would, would like it as wide as possible. And I know they would need a swept path analysis to make sure that fire trucks and everything can go down there and turn around, you know, because naturally the wider the better because get all the apparatus down there, something should happen. You know what I mean? Ambulance and everything. Uh, just off the top, of, how much of your uh, open space is not wetlands? So the wet, the um, total open space is about a little under 12 acres and about eight and a half is upland. How much of it is wetlands, do you know? Have to... 
So about three acres of the upland uh, of it's, the um, place. I took so the numbers up. Yeah. It's 11.8 acres of open space total and about eight and a half acres of upland of that. So it's about three acres of wetland. That, that's on the main piece that's between the development and French's stream. And then there's there's more open space at the end of the cul-de-sac. So that is, it's about, um, it's over an acre of total area. It's about 32,000 feet of upland, 22,000 feet of wetland. So it's more split. Yeah. So that's, that's in addition to the, the 12 acres on the other side. So, but, and then down near the road, we have a, about 12,000 feet. Um, yep, give or take, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah that's broken up. Yeah, I, I, um, I added those all up and I got 13.4 acres of total open space, 9.24 is upland and 3.8 is wetland. Yeah, for the three that, parcels. That makes sense for. Um, how many of these houses that you plan to or would like to build would be, um, be considered affordable housing? Have you thought about that? Um, we're open to, to talk about it, but we haven't really committed to anything at this point. Because that's a touchy subject, you know? And like every other town, we're trying to close the gap, you know? Yeah, well, we certainly want to work with everyone, and, and that's something we'd certainly be willing to talk to uh, the board about. As a point of order, Mr. Chair, so this is a preliminary subdivision, um, so we will be submitting more detailed plans. Does the board vote um, either to approve or not approve the preliminary subdivision? I don't know. Since I've been on the board, we haven't had a PUD. I would, I would assume not, because it's just a preliminary. You're going to change it. Yeah, and I was thinking a preliminary subdivision, you know, boards often vote up or down and then you go forward either regardless. I, I just think it was the same process here, but I wasn't sure. But regardless, our, our plan is to provide more detail and to move forward. So I, I don't know that it's, it's a great moment or anything. All right, we'll see what... We'll get we'll give you some feedback and I, I guess make a motion. I guess if you how the board feels. Well, or we could ask town council if if this is supposed to be like a preliminary subdivision. I that yeah we we would love input and obviously we're going to move forward. I just didn't know procedurally if this is like a preliminary subdivision where the board actually votes. Obviously, you know we have to come back for the full subdivision. Um, yeah, Mike. I don't know if you can see that. There's a question. A comment, rather. Yeah, I, I do see that one. Nothing's really getting approved tech tonight because they don't have. We don't have any information, no reports back or anything. Uh, Tony, what what do you think? Hold on. Yeah. Un unmute them. No, I don't think you need to vote. What's that? I don't, can you hear me? Yep. I don't think you need to vote. They're gonna come back for the uh, more detailed stuff and then they're gonna vote on their final plans. That's fine. All right, does anybody else on the board have any more questions? Let me 
I, I see we have another chat. Don't know really what the plan is. They're still talking about it. And so far they haven't gone that route. Yeah, if, if, the, if the chair is asking me, this is not a 40B, nor is that our intention. We have another one. All right, we're gonna, since people are chiming in with chats, we do have names here. They should give their street address too, so we have it on record. You know, that way if we, we can make it official if everybody logs on, if they chat it, chat something in, that way it's on record and we have your name and, and address. Because we do have comments from people at, on in town. All right, so I don't know, I kind of like what you see, but I know we still have a long way to go. You know, so before we invite everybody for comments, since nothing is really written in stone here and you're still a long way off from your final, I think we'll, uh, when, when do you think you'd be ready to come back? Well, I, I assume we'll supplement the, uh, our filing with water, sewer, and fire. We'll, we'll meet with the fire chief. Um, so we'll have official um, uh, comments from them. Uh, John, I'm not sure if your mic is muted, if you can tell me what you need for um, doing the additional and updating the filing. There we go. John, how yeah. much time do you need to, to be ready to file the it's hard to say, but we're going to have to go through um, in detail the requirements for the final plan. Uh, I, I can't imagine it being sooner than the next couple months, but it'll be in that range. So like June, maybe? July? Sure. All right. So... Um, do you prefer June or July? July? Go oh, with June if we can. All right. Yeah, shoot for June. All right, so that would be um, June 22nd. That's fine. All right, we have a couple, a couple questions here that are people are coming in. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, Chrissy. Sheila Targo. Yeah, I can see 91 that. Summer Street. Uh, she wanted to know, is that wetlands? There are wetlands on the property. I thought Mr. Kavanaugh addressed that. He also detailed um, the open space and the breakdown of open space and wetlands uh, and uplands. I'm not sure how, more de how much more detail we can give. Yep. Because all, all these... These prints are available if you went to the town clerk or to get them, they can get mailed electronically to you. So you can kind of review when he sees it up on the board. Everything's available. Um, we have um, Kathy and Wayne Boyd at 343 Concord Street. Did Mr. Darcy indicate he had ZBA approval? No, we didn't make that. This, this is a new filing and it's strictly with the planning board under the PUD. And also will the open space be restricted in per perpetuity? Well, it, I can think it'll be part of your approval and it'll certainly be on the plan as open space. And I guess that will be the wording of the planning board. All right, uh, Scott Crawford of 407 Concord Street is I. There's a plan for 40 units before the zoning board withdrawn. So 
so that we're only before the PUD. We yes, we don't have anything in front of the ZBA. Okay, just to clarify with everybody. And you were going to look into um, the titles on the property to. I will. I will. I will respond to that. I will search the title and I will. Respond. I know that. I know that came in last minute. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I, 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 yeah. Twenty minutes before we we came online. So yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll respond to it. I'm pretty confident of the quality of the title, but I'm not going to represent anything without going back and doing the search. So we'll we'll respond to that. Right. Yeah, what else we got here? Um, from, uh, Scott Crawford said, you asked for a continuation from zoning last week. I, I believe my associate did do that, but I, I, you know, I don't think we'll be moving forward with the zoning board, but um, right now, we're just before you. We're not seeking any zoning relief. Right, and we have uh, Andrea, is it Futes? I have 251 Conkin Street. Has there been a study about the impact of traffic on Conkin Street? I think there's yeah. been several recently, but uh, we haven't done one. Um, but we're certainly happy to address that issue. And if she wants to know about issues with water and sewer, that would be addressed by water and sewer. Well, when they go to them. Uh, Kevin Crane at 265 Conkin Street. Is the waterway that is within the construction footprint going to disrupt it in any way? And if so, does it require pre-approval pre to do so? You know, you're not disrupting any of the water, any of the streams. We are not. Okay. All right. Well, with that, uh, we can I get a motion to continue this um, hearing until when will you come on back? June June twenty second. Till June twenty second. I'll make a motion that we continue this until June twenty second. All right. Can I get a second on that? Second. All right, we have a first and a second. We'll go through it again. Um, Sean? Yes. James? Yes. Randy? Yes. Uh, Michael? I vote yes. All right, we will continue that until June 22nd while you guys research some things and try to get some form Ks and everything back. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time and consideration this evening. Very much appreciate the input. All right, thank you very much. All right. So we will continue that. So with, with that, I bring, bring the public hearing. Mike, you want to close the public hearing? Yeah, we're going to bring the public hearing for uh, Concord Meadows. 365 Concord Street to close for the continuance and we'll reopen it on the June 22nd meeting when they come back before us. Yeah, it's it's not closed, it's just continued. Just continued, yeah, all right. Just continued to June 22nd. All right. Um, we'll reopen the regular meeting, public meeting. Yeah, now we will. Yeah, thank you. We will reopen the uh, regular Rockland Town meeting to continue business. Um, we had listed on here Cresco at uh, 1015 Hingham Street, but they asked to be continued. So as of now, they are on the agenda for April. April. We'll see. We'll see what happens with them if, if they're ready. So it'll be it'll be busy. And I just want to um, 
thank Pat and Tony for jumping on, okay. helping us through this, and we'll probably see you next month when everybody is saying that says they're going to be ready. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Good night. Yeah. Thanks, good night. Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Okay. Um, next, we have some administration. Oh. All right. We have uh, to need a vote to approve the minutes of the February 23rd, 2021 meeting. If everybody's reviewed them. I believe I can't because I was not there, correct? You were not there, Randy. Because it was what? Your wife's birthday. Thank you very much. That is it was, true. And it was a very smart move. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was for you. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to push that off till um, next meeting. Oh, yes, because we need to quorum. We don't have a quorum on that since Rand Randy wasn't there and James just joined. All right, so we'll push that out to next month. Um, we have a, a bill here to uh, pay Gatehouse Media's in the amount of $1,901.36 for the 331 2021 advertisement for the town meeting articles. Mike, is that $1,091 or $1,900? $1,091, sorry about that, if I, and 36 cents if I misspoke. Do we have the money? Yeah. How exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I get a motion to pay that bill? I'll move to pay the bill. Can I get a second on that? Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Uh, John? Yes. Andy? Yes. James? Yes. Well, Michael, I vote yes. All right. Uh, one of the favorite parts of the night, mm -hmm. we have a motion to pay the secretary for the meeting of March 16th and with the Board of Selectmen and for tonight's meeting. Motion to pay. Welcome back, Randy. Well, you know, you had a lot of muting and unmuting to do. You earned your pay tonight. Too. Yeah, we won't be doing that again. All right. Can I get a second on that? Second. All right. All right. We'll first and boy, new guy. <laughs> I know my Robert's rules of water. You'll learn. All right. You All right. Pay, Let's, go that girl. Let's go through it again. Randy? Yes. James? Yes. John? Yes. Uh, Michael, I vote yes. All right. Updating potential activity. Um. Well, we'll probably have 1015 Hingham Street next month. We'll have probably have Dyer Street next month unless people come back uh, want to push out. Um, as everybody is aware of, with uh, 320 Concord Street, I do we do ha I do have to fill out some paperwork on that with the people wanting to build the 40B, even though they go before zoning and not us, for whatever reason, we have to fill out paperwork if we have any comments. So if anybody has any comments, just send them you know, to, the, to Chrissy, we'll get them on the planning board and then we'll write something up. That way, I don't, I don't know what we can do about it, but at least if we can make some comments, maybe it can slow them down going through the process because not an ideal situation. Oh, no. Opinion. I can't speak for everybody. Um, just a reminder too, if you haven't done it yet, everybody has to fill out the contract of interest law requirements. I'm sure everybody got the email. I know I haven't had time to fill it out yet, but those are due in April, April 9th, I believe. Christine, did we send those to you or did that go elsewhere? 
Did I do that already? What's that? Conflict of interest. You did it. <laughs> yeah, you're on top of things. Uh, one in a row. Oh, I think you did it. I think so. I think I you did I, do it, yes. I think I did it right away. Just Oh, Jamie has to do it. Huh? Jamie's going to have to do it. James, James. James. James is going to have to do it. I know <laughs> I have to do it. I haven't done it yet. Make a copy, send it to the town clerk, keep a copy. So has that been that sent be... to Jamie? Yeah, yeah I, have I have it. Tomorrow. Okay. Do, you, do you have it? I do. Yes. Oh, you do. Oh, okay. She sent it to me today. Oh, after okay. We left the town hall. Oh, perfect. So, perfect. Um, what else do I have notes here for? Um, I feel like I'm missing something, but I can't remember. Um, do you have anything, John? No, not at this time, Mike. Mike, back to that 320 Concord. Everything for comments has to be in writing to you, correct? Since we're not really going to see that at all. Uh, if you shoot an email to the planning board, Chris, you can forward it to me. I send it directly to me, and I'll just make something up because I have to submit it to uh, town town clerk. Uh, not town clerk, town administrator, Jen, assistant town okay. administrator. By I think April second or something like that, everything's supposed to be in. Uh, you know, that way. That way they can get a couple of things in writing. Huh. Yep. Um, there was a comment up here. Mm. Um, do you have anything, Randy, that you know of? Popping up in town that we should know about? No, I just was wondering when the continuance on the 1015 would be Hingham Street, and that'll be next month. Um, and no, you pretty much gave me, a, I don't, I haven't heard anything new, seen anything new that I've talked to anybody about. All right. I believe that's all we have. Let me just. Let me just check. All right, see if we have no other businesses on to con conduct here. Uh, can I get a motion to close? Motion to close. Can I get a second on that? I'll second it. All right, we'll go through it again. Randy? Yes. John? Yes. James? Yes. Me, I make a vote yes. And just a reminder, we have uh, the public hearing next Wednesday too, so we'll be back on back on Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. All right. Well, everybody have a good night, and we'll see you in a in a week or so, just over a week. Okay. Right. I'll send you a reminder. Don't worry. All right, and I'll stop by to sign the form A's Thursday. Yes, yeah, so I'll have to connect with Randy and um, I want to say Jamie. This is this is going to be difficult. Um, <laughs> you all know him as Jeans. I know him as Jamie. He knows me as Christine. You all know me as Chrissy. Just as just as great um, to sign the mylies. So. Um, Randy and whenever you guys can come by um, or I can meet you somewhere over the weekend, um, whichever is easiest, just let me know. Next couple days good? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm um, there usually, you know, um, 7.30, so. Okay. But you don't have to be. Yeah, I'll see you downstairs and sign then. Okay. Sounds good. Johnny, Johnny, you're doing okay? We're getting there, Randy. It's going to take another month or two, but we're getting there. Not a boy.